Travel and Tourism Masterclass, Lagos Aviation Academy. Let me introduce myself. My name is Neka Abazu, Account Manager at Lagos Aviation Academy. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, um, it's going to be a wonderful section, and um, I, I, I ask everyone to sit back and relax while we introduce you to your instructor that will be facilitating the class. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, such a great day to have you guys around. My name is John Asan. I'm a travel and tourism instructor here at Lagos Aviation Academy. So I'll be your facilitator for today. Uh, I promise we're going to have a great time. So um, we just want to wait for others to join in and then we'll start. Thank you.
Right. So I would like to welcome um, each and every one of us again. I would like to start off by introducing myself. So like I said earlier, my name is John Hassan. I'm a travel and tourism instructor here at Lagos Aviation Academy, and I welcome you all to today's masterclass on travel and tourism. Right, so today we'll be going to be looking at into um, some aspect of travel and tourism, some fundamental aspect, and um, as well as uh, looking at how to service the travel customer. Right, but before I go on, I would just like to know each and every one of us by our name, so it makes it easier for us to have an interactive engagement. So I can see we have here Abdul Kadri, right? Hope I pronounced that well. Yes, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine. My name is Asya so Abdul Kadri. Okay. So good to have you around. So good to have you around. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And um, I also like to introduce some of my colleagues uh, also here present. Right. I would like to start off by introducing our account manager. That's in the person of Mrs. Neka Abazu. So, Ineka, could you just wave and introduce yourself to the house, please? Hello, everyone. Good morning. Okay. And I also like to introduce my second colleague, the person of Mr. Michael Oswalo. He's also an instructor here at Lagos Aviation Academy. So, Mike, could you please introduce yourself to the house? Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our master class. It's glad to have you here. I believe you definitely enjoyed this session. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the session. Thank you. Okay, I can see here we have some people joining in. So please, um, for those of us that are joining, please, I'll kindly love us to introduce ourselves to the house. So it's much easier for us to interact that way. So I can see here we have Esther Essang. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Esther, please, could you introduce yourself? Okay, we also have here um, Kandora Stevens, as well as Nelly Al. Good morning, Harry. everyone. My name is Esther Esang. Okay, good morning, Esther. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Okay. Good morning, my name is Kandora. Nice good to meet you. Good nice to meet everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to dive in into the course proper. So we we'll also have time for questions and answer. And likewise, as I'm presenting, I'll also be sharing my screen so we all can see um, the slide that I'm projecting. So I'll just ask if you give me a few minutes, let me share my screen so we can start in NS. So just give me a few minutes, please. So can we all see my screen now? Can we all see my screen, please? Yes, we can. Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, I can. All right. So like I said, we're looking into the travel and tourism masterclass. That's what today's class is all about. So we're going to look at some aspect of why the travel and tourism industry is a buoyant, is a buoyant, vibrant industry. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And, and please, I also appreciate it um, if, um, for those of us that our mic are on, I would appreciate if you can all mute our mic as well as our, um, um, as our video as well, so we don't have a lot of sound congestion. And if for any reason you would like to make a comment or ask a question, you can just kindly click on the and icon and I'll get notified and I'll give the floor to speak. Is that good? Is 
Is that okay, noted. please? Yes, noted. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Let's get we're diving into the course proper. Okay, so now I'm just going to talk about the course. What's the course all about? The program we are all here for, we seek to equip you all, that's the participant, with knowledge about airfare comp computation and ticketing skills, and also for you to be able to acquire the word adequate knowledge to serve you. And also for you to be able to acquire adequate knowledge to serve your what? Your various what? Clients, right? That's your various travel clients. And for the content of this course, we're going to focus more on fundamental FS and ticketing, as well as looking into the travel and tourism industry and how it affects the travel professional, as well as looking into as well on how to service the, what, the travel customer. So we want the content of what we're going to be talking about today. So now, we all are aware that um, as humans, we are social beings and it's in our nature to interact. So one of the ways we interact is by what? Traveling. We are people that move from one place to another. And that's why the travel industry is very buoyant, right? Because it contains you selling products for people. Right? It contains you selling products for people, right? From all different aspects of the world. Right? So according to the International, International Air Transport Association, sorry, please, could you mute your mic, please? Hello? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So according to the International Air Transport Association, which is IATA, right? Travel is defined as the physical transportation of a person from one point what, to another. Right? Travel is defined as the physical transportation of a person from one point what, to another. So travel can mean you moving from Lagos all the way down to what, Dubai or from Lagos all the way down to Istanbul. So long as you're transporting yourself physically by any means necessary, from one point to another, it is defined as what? Travel. And also tourism, on the other hand, is defined as the activity of people traveling to, visiting or staying in a place outside the usual what, environment. And there's several reasons why people do that. People travel or tour either for the purpose of leisure or recreation as well for all purpose of what's business, right? So if you if you intertwine these two concepts as travel and tourism, you're still relatively referring to the same what thing. Right. So aside talking about or defining travel and tourism, what opportunities does this um, industry offer? The travel and tourism industry offers opportunities of visiting exciting destinations, also selling niche products, lifestyles and brand, and selling one of the most perishable commodities on the planet, right? So in the travel and tourism industry, you're able to sell what? You're able to sell ideas, right? Or travel experience to your what? Client. There's several tour destinations across the world we have some of them in Africa, for instance, if you look at Nairobi, if you look at Tanzania, if you look at South Africa, also if you look at Europe, there's several places that one can tour. So in the travel and tourism industry, you have an opportunity to sell those what travel experience, right? As well as being able to have what's different niche for people, especially when you're selling interest tours to people. So it also gives you a room to sell a product that is perishable. Perishable in the concept that the moment a uh, travel product is not maximized, right, it is lost forever because it can never be what? Retrieved, right? And also, in order for you to be able to do all these things I've mentioned, you need to be able to have a what? 
or well, you need to be able to have what organizational skills as well as management skills as well to enable you achieve what this what aim. And that's where so I hope you you all can hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Now, in order for you to be able to achieve this, you need to be able to what equip yourself with management and organizational skills. And that's where um, IATA what comes to play. That's the International Air what, Transportation Association. They're the body that are in charge of travel and tourism across the world. Now, they also offer training that enable what travel professionals to be able to achieve what they are mean, right? Now, there's some facts that I would like to share with us, right? About why this industry is something you should look forward into going into. The first fact states that the travel and tourism industry employs over, what, 200 million people worldwide. That statement just simply states that what, there are opportunities that you can tap on in the what, travel and tourism industry. Likewise, the travel and tourism industry is a 24 hours a day industry. It's an industry that never sleeps. Why? Because people are constantly what, traveling. People are constantly what, traveling. Right. Another fact I would like to share is that international tour arrival worldwide will reach what is projected to reach what, 1.8 billion by the year 2030, still in, the, in line with the fact that the industry is constantly going to what grow and what increase as well. Another fact that I would like to share is that the airline carries 2.8 billion passengers what, annually. So what all these facts are gearing to us is that the industry is buoyant and is what, quite vast enough to accommodate everyone. And also, the industry employs more than 56 million direct and also provide 95 million indirect jobs. Okay. And last but not the least, the air transport also contributes to the creation of 18 million indirect jobs in the water and the tourism industry. So all these facts are just gearing to, the, to state that this industry is quite vast and buoyant to accommodate what everyone. Now, there are also other sectors or aspects of the tourism industry that one can what, focus on. We have the transportation aspect, we have the accommodation aspect, we have the attraction aspect, we have the event and conference aspect, food and beverage, the tourism service centers, as well as retail travel outlets. So these are various sectors that you all can focus on or create a niche for yourself. So in terms of transportation, if you want to focus on selling air, what, air product like your FS or ticketing, or you want to sell um, bus service product, or you want to go into car rentals, these are opportunities that you can also venture into. Then in terms of accommodation, if you want to venture into the hospitality, hotel and hospitality area, we also have what room for that as well. Then for attraction, if you want to go into having recreational or creating recreational centers, right, that could also bench. Then we have the food and beverage aspect. If you want to be a restaurant owner, right, that could also fly as well. Then all if you want to set up your own what travel agency, right, that is also an avenue to what succeed in this what travel and tourism industry. So there are different aspects that one can actually focus and concentrate on. So now what makes the travel and tourism industry exciting? What makes it an exciting what profession? So I'm just going to state some facts here. The first thing that makes the travel and tourism industry an exciting profession is one, it's a seen as what an adventure, right? You're able to explore different aspects of the world, different parts of the world, rather. It also is viewed as a form of what education and also it creates what experience. So within the travel and tourism industry, you could what 
have adventure, get educated, and also experience the world at your what, fingertips. In terms of an adventure, the travel and tourism industry, right, is regarded as an adventure because it's what, it helps you explore the world, right? It helps you explore the world, and also it helps you to what, participate in different fun, what, vacation. So there are different activities that you can do while what, experiencing this adventure. You can either go mountain climbing, you can either go in hiking, you can either do what, go kayaking or scuba diving, depending on what activity, what attracts you or you're interested in, right? Then the next one talks about the travel and tourism industry as a form of what, education, right? So in this aspect, the industry, is a what is a continuous learning process because one you're able to learn or acquire knowledge about history or historical um, historical places of different countries or cities in the world. You're also able to get cultural knowledge as well as social knowledge during your different what vacation or what excursion while you're touring the world. You're able to meet locals of different cities and understand their respective what culture and how. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me now? I think it's a network, but I can actually hear you. Sir. I still can't hear you. Yes, I can also hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me clearly now? I can hear you clearly. I don't know. Maybe it's a network. Okay. What I'll suggest is if you can log out and log in, log back in, maybe that will help. Okay. Ruby, can you hear me now? Ruby, can you hear me? All right, but well, can we all see my screen now? Yes. Yes, but please make it a bit um um visible so I can screenshot. Come on now. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. All right. Now, like I said earlier, so it, it's one thing to be interested, right? Then in an industry. Sorry, so Mr. Azar, why did you jump to this slide? You've as you were, you skipped them um, two slides. Oh, sorry, I, I've spoken about most of the content here before, so that's why. Okay, it's fine then. Thank you. I wanted to screenshot. Okay, you can proceed though.
Sir, please, I can't hear you again. Hello. Yes. Sir, do you mute your mic or something? I don't think he's speaking. I think he paused. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Oh. So apologies. I apologize for that, please. But I'm portable now. You can all hear me now. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I said the fares and ticketing, right? We talk about the electronic um, booking tools, which is the GDS functionality. Also, be looking at fundamentals in FS and ticketing, as well as what distribution of airline retail with what NDC. So these are what aspect of topics that will be dealt in this aspect of the what course. Okay. Okay. All right. So can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can oh. hear you. All right. Okay. Okay, spoken about this. All right. So now talking about seven the what the the customer so now one of your primary job as a travel professional is to make sure that the needs and expectation of your your customers are what met right and in doing so you need to be able to be equipped with different what skills that will allow you to render a good what an adequate customer what service Right, so that's what serving the travel professional is. So now, what is the role of the travel professional in this regard? So as a travel professional, you might work in retail or wholesale environment. You may work in the call center where customers are served by the phone or email or in agency where you have in work, customer walk in and are served by face to what to face. So in all travel professional role is to satisfy the need so that the customer has a stress-free and positive what travel, what experience. Now, what are those skills that are adequate or essential in order to what render the what a good customer service? One of the first things you need to have is what product knowledge. You need to be well grounded in the product you're serving. So if you are working as a tour operator, you need to be well grounded and the tour packages that your company is what selling. You need to be able to know the, the cities. You need to be able to know how to organize, how the what package are organized. You need to know the pricing. You need to be well grounded with the what the supplier that is helping you to sell the package as well. Likewise, if you're also selling efforts you need also to be able to get yourself acquainted with the what respective codes and what fundamental principles are used in whatever um travel technology that you're using then another viable skills that is important is your operational skills now in talking about operational skills here it's just talking about how well you're able to utilize the various technologies that are being used in your what in your in the industry. So, for instance, one of the um, technologies travel professionals use is the global distribution system, which is the GDS. So that's the platform where travel agents right make or book reservation for travel customers. So, as a travel professional, you have to be well grounded in understanding how what platform works. Because it will enable you to what carry out your function what efficiently. Then another one that is quite important, right, is your interpersonal skill. So talking about interpersonal skills is how you interact with your customer. 
So your your knowledge of um, your questioning technique, how you answer, ask questions and answer questions, your knowledge of body language, understanding of body language, as well as being an active what listener would enable you to what be efficient what in doing your duties as a travel professional. Then also being able to what being able to anticipate your customer, um, being able to anticipate your customer or what they purchase is also another viable skill. Talking about customer value anticipation. And the only way you can do this is by what having a profile of your what customer. So being able to have a profile of the different demands would also help you in able to serve or what give the right product that we're able to meet or exceed their what their respective needs. So do we have any questions so far? No, for now. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry, sir. Yes, please. You said um, global distribution something. Yes, global distribution system. That's the GDS. System. Okay. Yes. Okay, sir. All right. Okay. Now we're going to be looking into fundamentals in FS and what? Ticketing. Fundamentals in FS and ticketing. So it is one of your job as a travel professionals to make what um, reservation, right? FS reservation for your what client. But in order to be able to do that effectively, you need to understand some concept behind all the reservation that you're making. So in this part of the course, we'll be we're talking about how to interpret, right? How to interpret concepts regarding FS and what ticketing. So that's what we'll be doing when we're looking into the fundamentals in FS and what, and ticket. So, but before we go or dive into that, I need to introduce it to the what, to what we call the phonetic alphabet. So now in the aviation industry, phonetic alphabet are used as a means of what communicating clearly and what easily, right? The purpose is to avoid every form of error and misunderstanding with words and what references. So just like the way we have our, um, our alphabet, right? That's our ABCs in our respective languages, right? In the aviation industry, we make use of phonetic alphabet. Now, each of these alphabet are similar to the normal alphabet that we're used to. That's our A, Bs, all the way to Z. But it's just that now each of the alphabet has a code name that is attached to them. So I'm just going to introduce us to that as well so we can get ourselves acquainted with that because while in the job, you're always going to make reference to what each of this phonetic alphabet. Okay, so I'm going to start off with A. So A represents what? Alpha, B for Bravo, C for Charlie, D for Delta, E for Echo, F for Foxtrot, G for Golf, H for Hotel, I for India, J for Juliet, K for Kilo, L for Lima. We also have M for Mike, N for November, O for Oscar, P for Papa, Q for Quebec, R for Romeo, S for Syria, T for Tango, U for Uniform, V for Victor, W for Whiskey, X for X-Ray, we have Y for Yankee, and we have Z for Zulu, right? So those are all the phonetic alphabet. So like I said earlier, they're basically used what to what to ease what communication within the aviation what industry so now i would like us to do a little exercise ourselves right i would like us to each all spell a first name using 
the phonetic alphabet. So I'd like us to spell a first name using the phonetic alphabet. So can anyone give it a try? Echo, Syria. Okay. Tango. Tango. Hotel. Hotel. Echo. Echo. R Romeo. Romeo. That's very good. Esther. Esther, very good. Very good. So can anyone else give it a try? Okay, my own first name is long, so I'm just going to use a shorter word. Okay. So, okay. Nelly, yes, November. November. Echo. Echo. Uh, Lima. 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 Yankee. Yankee. Thank you so much, Nelly. Nelly. Thank you yeah. so much, Nelly. So you can see it's quite easy to um, grasp around. So once you know the alphabet and the code name, then it's easy to walk around with it. Okay, very good. Now, okay. All right. So like you see, we have an example here of a city name, which is Sao Paulo, right? So you can see if I'm to spell Sao Paulo using the phonetic alphabet, we have here Syria, Alpha, Oscar, Papa, Alpha, Uniform, Lima, and what? Oscar, right? So that's Sao Paulo. I'll need someone to try this. The first person that gets this right what gets a gift from me. Right, so I need someone to try this out, anyone at all. The question, please. So you to spell out Ontario using the phonetic alphabet. Ontario. Ontario, O for Oscar. Okay. N for November. Okay. C, Tango. Okay. A Alpha. All right. R Romeo. Romeo. I India. India. O Oscar. Oscar. Okay. Nelly, is that you? Esther. Esther. No, no, no. Okay. Esther, very good. So, Esther, I owe you a gift by the Thank end of the class. Well. All right. So, that's very <laughs> good. So, you can see it's quite easy to get a graph, get, um, um, the phonetic alphabet. The moment you know what each alphabet represents, that's the code name, then it's easy to what? To use them amicably. Okay, the next thing we're going to be talking about is what? Three letter city code. So, as travel professionals, you're always going to what? Come across or interface with this three letter city or airport code. So, remember I said because you're selling a travel product, people are traveling from one city to another city in different what countries. It might be cities within the same country or cities outside what? Outside different countries. So now each of this code are used to represent different cities. That's the three letter city code or airport code. I used to represent cities or airport located in what different countries. Now, why is it so or why were they developed? Right. So in response to the need by industry professionals to have a shorthand way of referring to cities and airports in many countries. So prior before now, right, each of these um, three letter city codes were manually what written on paper ticket. And remember, there are some countries whose names are quite lengthy. Right. So it's not always easy to reference or identify them. Right? But because of how things transpired, different travel professionals came together and suggested the need to have a shorthand way of making reference to each of the cities and what the respective what airport right another reason for the development of three letter city and airport code is to what make reservation and what to what make reservation and what computing ticket and also to assist baggage handlers at airports with placement of luggage on the correct what flight. So those are the reasons 
why the three letter CT or airport code were what developed. So for instance, for Lagos, right? Lagos in Nigeria, the three letter code for Lagos is what? LOS, that is Lima, Oscar, what? Syria, right? If you look at um, another popular city like Dubai, the three letters code for Dubai is Delta, X-Tray, what? Bravo, Delta, X-Tray, what? Bravo, that's the three letter code for Dubai. So that's why if you're traveling on your ticket, you're always going to have each of these cities represented either by the three letter city code or the what? Airport code. Now there are certain cities that have what? Multiple airport. Right. Ideally, if a city has multiple airports, each of the airports located within that city is going to have its own unique what three letter what code. But if a particular city just has one single airport, the same what three letter code allocated to the city is also going to be allocated to the what to the airport as well. So I'll give you a proper example. Take, for instance, Lagos in Nigeria. We only have one international airport in Lagos, which is the Muritala Mohammed International Airport, right? And like I said earlier on, the city code for Lagos is what? LOS, which is Lima, Oscar, Syria. And if you look at it again, the same city code is also the same what? Airport code for Lagos, which is also what? Lima, Oscar, what? Syria. So a proper example of a city that has multiple airports is what? Paris. So Paris is a city in France. So if you look at the screen now, the city code for Paris is known as what? Papa Alpha Romeo, which is P-A-R. So within Paris, we have multiple airports. So I'm going to give us a list of some of those airports. The first one we have the, is what? The airport called Charles de Gaulle, a very popular airport in Paris, right? The airport code for Charles de Gaulle is Charlie Delta Gulf, Charlie Delta Gulf. So if you look at it, the airport code for Ch Charles de Gaulle is outrightly different from the city code for what Paris. The reason being is that because Paris has multiple airports, each of the airports located in Paris would have their own unique what code. Another airport located in Paris is what Orly Airport. All right, and the airport code for that is what Oscar Romeo Yankee. Do you all understand that now? Yes, we do. Okay, so so the simple concept is: if a city has multiple airports, each airport will have its own unique code. But if a city has just one single airport, the same code is going to be used for the city code as well as the airport code. Okay, right. Now, talking about journeys, right? So throughout the course of your job as a travel professional, you're constantly going to either create itineraries or make booking reservations pertaining to the journey that your client would like to watch travel on. Right. So we're going to look at what a journey entails. But before I go that, I'd just like to ask us, what do we understand by the concept journey? What do you understand by the concept journey or how would you define a journey? The floor is open, please. How would you define a journey? Let me try. Okay. Hi. Okay. Okay. Um, Johnny is um taking a trip to somewhere okay. outside your visual environment. Okay. Okay. Yes. So for different okay. taking, purposes, taking a trip purposes, somewhere like outside your visual environment. environment. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Esther, anyone else? Who else wants to give it a try? Hi. Um, okay. Um, is basically the act of traveling from one place to another. Okay, the act of traveling from one place to another. I like that. So, Pascal, I thought you wanted to say, was it Pascal that just spoke now? 
Halo. Halo. Oke. So, what's the last person that made a statement? I just want to get the it, person. Um, Pandora. I, okay, I, Pandora. I, okay, okay. All right. So yeah, you're all absolutely correct in your in your own way. So journey just entails you moving from one point what to another. That's just the, the, the major or key word there is movement, right? If you're not moving, then you're not embarking on a journey. You have to leave a point, right? You, you have to leave a starting point to end at another point, right? The moment you're moving in that sequence, then you're regarded as what embarking on a journey. So now I'm going to define it this way. You all are absolutely correct, but I'm going to define it this way to give it a bit of, um, to give more context to it. A journey can be defined as an entire trip, right? From origin. So origin now we're talking about the place where the journey begins to destination where the journey ends. It's still in line with what you all said. So a journey can be defined as an entire trip from origin, where the journey begins, to what? Destination, where the journey ends. So in NS, what that implies is that for you to embark on the journey, you have to what have a point of origin as well as having a point of what? Destination. So that's what a journey what entails. So pricing a journey is influenced largely by the type of journey traveled. And it's what anatomy. So most time when you're pricing a, a journey, there are different factors that could what affect it. The type of journey you're traveling on, the the cabin class that you're flying on, as well as the what the global indicator or the routing that you're traveling on. So there are different factors that could what affects the price of your journey. But in simple context, a journey can just be defined as an entire trip where you depart from a point of origin to a point of what destination. Is that clear, please? Is that clear, please? Yes, it is. All right. Yeah. Okay. So now, what are the types of journeys we have? We have two major types of journeys that, that influence your fares. We have the one-way journey and we have the return what journey. We have the one-way journey, we have the return what journey. What's a one-way journey? A one-way journey is priced from the point of origin, right, to the point of destination using a one-way fare. Right, a one way journey is priced from point of origin to point of destination using a one way fare. Now, what are those Sorry, features? Mr. Jack, I see your previous slide. Okay, thank you. All right, and proceed. All right, so like I said. A one-way journey is a journey price from point of origin to a point of destination using a one-way fare. So a one-way has certain features that are what unique to it. The first feature of a one-way journey, sorry, please, could you mute your mic, please? All right, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So one of the features of a one-way journey states that the origin and destination are in different what countries. The origin and destination are in different countries. So I'm going to give us an example. So if I'm traveling from Dublin, right? So the code we have there, which is Delta Uniform Bravo, that's the city code for Dublin. So Dublin is a, a city in Ireland in what? Europe, right? So if I'm traveling from Dublin, to LOS, which is Lagos, right? That is a one-way journey because I'm traveling directly from my point of origin to my what? To my destination. And also if I'm traveling from Dublin via what? Paris. So remember Papa Alpha Romeo is a city code for Paris, which is a city in France in Europe. So if I'm traveling from Dublin in Ireland via Paris 
in France to Lagos in Nigeria is also regarded as a one-way journey. Why? Because the origin city, which is my starting point and my destination city are what different. That's one way you can identify a what a one-way journey. Is that clear, please? No, please. Okay. So let me take that again. So I said features of a one-way journey states that origin and destination are in different countries. So what that implies is that for one-way journeys, you're simply traveling from your point of origin direct to your what point of destination without returning back to where the journey was started. That's what a one-way journey is all about. I'm traveling from Dublin in Ireland directly to Lagos in Nigeria, and I'm not returning back to Dublin, right? So long as I'm not coming back to where my journey started, that journey is regarded as a one-way journey. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah, it's clear. All right, then. All right, then. Okay. Right. Another feature of a one-way journey states that the journey is applied in the actual direction, meaning it's just moving straight. You're not coming back. It's moving directly to where the journey is going. So that's why a fare for a one-way journey applies in the actual what direction. So that travel is regarded as what an outbound what travel. Traveling in the actual direction is regarded as an outbound what travel. Then a return journey, on the other hand, is a journey priced from the point of origin to the point of turnaround and back to the point of origin. You can see there's a slight difference here. For return journey, you start off from a point of origin, you get to a point where you make a U-turn and return back to the initial starting what point. So here are some of the features of a return journey. First off, the point of origin and the point of final destination are the same. So because I'm starting my journey from Dublin and I'm going all the way to what Paris, then to what Lagos and coming back to Dublin, that type of journey is regarded as what a return journey. Why? Because the last point, which is my final destination point, is still the same as what my starting point. So I'm going to give us an example to buttress that. So let's look at this, um, this itinerary we have up on the screen. We have our origin point in Dublin. Remember, Dublin is a city in Ireland, which is in Europe, right? So we're traveling from Dublin via what Paris, right? Paris city in France, and we are returning back to where we started which is Dublin in Ireland. You can see the slight difference from what we show for a one-way journey and what we're having here on the return. So this is a perfect example of a return journey, a journey that starts off from a point of origin and ends back at the point where the journey actually what started. Is that okay? Yes, it is. All right. All righty. So now, unlike our one-way journey that we just had um, one company that's traveling in one direction, for our return journeys, we are traveling in two different directions, right? So the first direction of travel, which is the actual direction, is called the outbound, right? For return journey, the first direction of travel, which is the outro direction, is called the outbound, while the reverse direction of travel is called the inbound. So a return journey has two fair components, while a one-way journey just has one fair component. Do we have any questions so far? Do we have any questions so far? Hello, Mr. John. Yes, please. Okay, so the you said the one-way journey has um, just um, one component. component. Yes, please. Which is the outbound 
yes. fair component, right? Yes. Okay. All right. I just wanted to be clear on that. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So this is an ideal projection of how um, a ticket display looks on a GDS platform. Remember I said GDS is one of the platform travel agents used to make reservations. So this is a typical um, projection of a ticket display on a GDS platform. It's right? so tiny, we can't see. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can you see now? No. Still tiny. Oh, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, oh, well, now. Still tiny. Okay. Uh, okay. Fair. So, all right. So you can see here where we have um, DUB, those are, that's Dublin. We have um, Frankfurt, that's FRA, that's Father Romeo Alpha. So Frankfurt is a city in Germany. Then we have India, Syria, Tango, that's IST. That's Istanbul, which is a city in Turkey, right? Then we have BJS, which is Bravo, Juliet, Syria, which is Beijing. Beijing is a city in what, China. And we have TYO, which is Tango, Yankee, Oscar, which is a, what, a city in Japan. So if you look at this what itinerary from Dublin via Frankfurt, Istanbul, Beijing to Japan, what type of journey would you classify that as? Would you classify it as a return or a one-way journey? One-way journey. One-way journey, exactly. Why would you say it's a one-way journey? Because he's coming. He's going from Dublin to I don't know what that place that country is. Then he's going to Istanbul, and also from Istanbul, he's going to Beijing, Beijing, and Tokyo. Then yes. his final destination is Tokyo. So basically, he's actually just making stops till he yeah. gets his final destination. Exactly. So like I said, under the components, a uh, one-way journey, right? Your origin and your final destination point are always going to be different. That's the fact. For your one-way journey, your origin and final destination points are always what's going to be different. So remember we said um, that um, cities have multiple airports that they have different codes so if you look at the first column above there we have dublin frankfurt we have frankfurt istanbul then we have on the line three we have um asterisk there what istanbul then we have pex so the pex there is the airport code for beijing capital airport what that simply implies is that within the city of Beijing, you have multiple airport. Then where we have HND, that's Hotel November Delta, right? Is also an airport code for what Tokyo, another airport in what Tokyo in Japan. So there are instances when you're using your GDS, most time reservation are always going to be what? They're always going to use the airport code when making reservations. So it's also your job to get acquainted it's what the different airport code located in what different what cities. Is that clear? Is that clear, please? Yes. All right. So if you look at the itinerary there, we just have travel from what Dublin via Frankfurt, Istanbul, what Beijing, and what Tokyo. All right. So before I proceed, I'd just like to ask a few questions. So can someone give me the what city code for what Frankfurt? Anyone that tries gets a gift for me as well. City code for Frankfurt. And you tell me where, what country Frankfurt is located in. City code for Frankfurt. Can anyone try? Frankfurt is in Germany, but I'm not certain about the. So, can you give me the code? I need the code. I need the code. I just spoke about it not too long ago. And if you're giving me the code, I'll need to use the phonetic alphabet. The code is right there. I just want you to recognize it. Hmm. 
Can anyone try? Uh, can I try? Yes, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Frank Port, right? Yeah, so use the code. Yeah. Use the phonetic alphabet to pronounce it. Um, uh, okay, let me try. Okay. So, Father Romeo, um, Father Romeo Alpha. Very good. Pandora, is that you? Yeah. Okay, so I owe you a gift then. So, Pandora, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. So, Esther and Pandora, I owe you a gift by the end of the class. Okay, so Frankfurt is actually Father Romeo Alpha, which is located in Germany, a city in Germany. Okay. All right. So, the next one we have here. We have a journey from Seoul. Seoul is a city in what South Korea, in what Asia. We have the next city is what San Francisco, which is a city in what United States. So San Francisco is what Syria, Father Oscar. Then we also have Los Angeles, which is a city in United States as well. And the city code for Los Angeles is what Lima Alpha X3. Then we also have Tokyo. Whose city code is what Tango Yankee Oscar, and we have the journey finally ending in what seal. So, what type of journey would you classify this as? Is it a return or a one way? Return. Return, right? Because the initial starting point and the final destination are what are the same. Same. Okay. Hmm. So is that clear? Hello? Yes. Clear. Yeah. So now, another thing that we I will need to emphasize is that um, in moving forward, if you're going to strive or succeed or work effectively you need to have a strong what knowledge of geography right at least you should be able to identify which parts or what country certain cities are located in because that will also help you when you're trying to create itineraries for what your passenger so another thing that so another thing that I would also like to state is most time if you're creating itinerary because of your knowledge of geography you're able to move or create itinerary that what that moves seamlessly meaning you don't have to move in zigzag bringing back your passenger to a city that they've already visited what before so if you look at what we have on the screen here we said a client in dubai calls you right and asks for help in planning his business trip right from dubai and he also would like to visit what Amsterdam. So AMS, which is Alpha Mike Syria, is the city code for Amsterdam in the Netherlands, right? Then we also like to visit Barcelona. So Bavro, Charlie, Nancy, or November, right? That's BCN, is the city code for Barcelona in Spain. And likewise, the, past, the client says we also would like to visit London. So L O N, that's Lima, Oscar, November is the city code for London, as well as visiting Madrid, which is MAD, that's Mike, what, Alpha Delta, and what, and Rome, which is what, Romeo, Oscar, Mike, and also would like to return back, what, to Dubai. So now, if you're going to create an itinerary like this, you also have to factor in the location of each of these, what, respective, what, countries, right? So I would like to ask, so let's just give it a try. What would be the ideal way this client should travel? Remember, it says you would like to visit all the city, but never specified how he or she would like to travel. So how do you think the client should travel? So can someone give it a try?
Okay, so what is origin? Like, where is it coming from? So the origin is Dubai and it's coming back to Dubai. That's a return journey. Yes, yes. So how should we create the itinerary? Wow. I don't know, Mr. John, help us. <laughs> okay. So now, if, if you look... Sorry, could you mute your mic, please? So now let's do this together, all right? So if you look at the map we have projected, map we have projected here, right? Since we're starting off in Dubai and we're still coming back to Dubai, one of the best way to travel is from Dubai first to where? To Barcelona, right? So we link Dubai to Barcelona then from Barcelona, we link what? The next city, which is what? Madrid. Madrid. Do you understand? You can see the sequence we are going now. Then from Madrid, Madrid. we we'll link what? what? From Madrid, we we'll link what? London. Then from London, we we'll link what? Amsterdam. Then from Amsterdam, we we'll link what? Rome. And we we'll return back to what? Dubai. You can see the sequence. It moves but seamlessly, right? Assuming we decided to go from what? from Dubai to what, Rome, then from Rome to what, um, London, from London to Madrid, from Madrid to Barcelona, from Barcelona to Amsterdam, and from Amsterdam to what, Dubai. That is not a properly constructed itinerary because we're just moving in zigzag motion, moving up and down. But moving from Dubai to Barcelona, from Barcelona, to what, Madrid, from Madrid to London, and from London to what, Rome, and from Rome to what, Dubai, is an ideal way to what, construct or create what, an itinerary. So it's always advisable that your knowledge of geography is always going to be what, the key, right? Having a sound knowledge of geography would help you in creating proper itineraries for your what, for your clients. Is that clear, please? Okay. Is that clear, please? Yes. All right. Okay. The next thing I just want to talk about is talking about some key concept or terminologies that we are always going to what, come across or use, right, throughout the course of our stay in the travel and tourism industry. I've already made mention of a few. I'm just going to highlight some of them. So the first one that talks about country of commencement. So country of commencement is defined as the country from which travel on the first international sector takes place. That's the country where the journey would start or departs from. So if you look at the itinerary we have, suppose you're traveling from Singapore, which is what Syria, India, November, right? Via Sydney. So the city code for Sydney is Syria Yankee Delta, that's S-Y-D and you're going all the way to Vancouver, right? Vancouver is a city in Canada, which is what represented by what YVR, that's Yankee Victor Romeo. So in this, what? In this itinerary or in this instant, right? Our country of commencement will be what? Singapore. Because between Singapore and Sydney, that is where we have our first international, what? Sector. Is that clear? Yes, please. Okay. Then the next thing I would like to talk about there is country of payment, right? Country of payment is defined as a country where payment is made by the purchaser of what? The ticket, right? The country where the, the sorry, the country where payment is made by the purchaser of what? The ticket. So for instance, if you're traveling from from Dublin, right? Dublin to um, Reykjavik, and from Reykjavik you're going all the way to what? To um, Ottawa in Canada, right? From Dublin to Reykjavik, and from Reykjavik to Ottawa in Canada. 
and your and your fare, right, was purchased, right, by maybe a relative in what Tokyo, right? So ideally, your journey is from Dublin via Reykjavik in Iceland and from Reykjavik to Ottawa in Canada. But the fare itself was purchased by a, by your brother. By brother. Sorry, could you mute your mic, please? Sorry, can you meet your mic? Okay. Like I said, and you, your ticket or the, the fare was purchased by your brother in Japan. So in that instance, what Tokyo, right? Tokyo in Japan is seen as your what Japan itself is seen as your what country of what payment. So country of payment just talk about the country where the payment is made by the what purchaser of the ticket. And the next um, concept that talks about departure. So departure talks about the day or time of the flight on which the passenger is booked or ticketed what to travel. The day or time on which the passenger is booked or ticketed to travel is defined as what a departure then the direct flight here talks about any flight with a single what number so any flight that has a single number irrespective of whether they are what in route stop or changes of what an aircraft is defined as a what a direct what flight do we have any question yes please yes please ask your question Okay, so what do you mean by en route and um, stops? Yeah, under the direct so now, flight. So en route stop is when you're making connections, like you're stopping within a city and you're not spending more than two and to four hours within that city. That's what en route stop means. So it's just like you having a layover. You're just stopping or connecting within that city for a few hours before you would continue. All right, thank you. I think he went off. Hello. 
Hello? Can you hear him again? What's the problem? I think he went off. I think his connection went off. Okay. Um, I don't know what's happening. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, he's back. All right, so I apologize yes, can. for for the break in transmission. I had a bit of network glitch, so okay. I sincerely okay. apologize for that. Yes, but I hope you were able to hear the last statement I made before okay. uh, my network tripped up. Yes, I think you can just continue from there. Okay. Okay. All right. So just give me a minute, please. Let me. Okay. So just give me a minute, please. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, concept is domestic. So for domestic flights, obviously talking about flights within the same country, then the concept called fare. So fare just simply talks about the amount charged for what air transportation of a port passenger, which is inclusive of what taxes, fees, and what charges. Then earlier on, when I was explaining one way and return, I made mention of fair component. So a fair component is defined as a portion of an itinerary between two consecutive fair construction points. So when you hear the concept fair construction point, it's just making reference to your origin and your destination. Remember, if you want to price a fair, irrespective if you go to an airline website, it's always going to ask you, where is the journey starting from? Where is the journey terminating in? So it's from these two points that the system is able to what price and generate a fare for you. So the fare construction point makes reference to your terminal points, which are the what city of reference where your journeys are always priced from. So your fare component in this regard just talks about what the direction of your travel. So if you look at the example we have here, we have a journey from Dublin in Ireland via what Frankfurt in Germany, via Istanbul, via Beijing to where? To Tokyo. So in this regard, the fare is priced from Dublin to what? Tokyo. That is our fare construction point. But the fare component talks about the portion of the journey between these two what? Point, right? So from Dublin to Tokyo, we have what one what fair company. Because if you look at it from Dublin to Frankfurt, that is defined as a what a fair component or a sector. From Frankfurt to Istanbul is another sector. From Istanbul to what Beijing, another what sector, as well as from Beijing to Tokyo. But the entire journey itself is priced from Dublin to what? to Tokyo. Is that clear, please?
Please, I didn't get that. So I said the FEP component is defined as a portion of an itinerary between two consecutive fair construction points. So I was trying to define the fair construction point. I said your fair construction point are defined as terminal point, right? Where your journeys are priced from. So I said the terminal point just make reference to your origin and your what destination, because those are the two points where your journeys are normally what priced from. So based on this itinerary, we have one fair component. Why? Because we're moving or the journey is traveling in one what direction. That is from Dublin straight down to what? Tokyo. Is that clear? All right, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So we've spoken about fair component and also fair construction point as well. So fair type, your fair type. Now, each fair and airline sells has a, a fair type, right? So your fair type is also known as your what's your fair basis code. So see it this way, the same way we have barcodes labeled on every product we buy at the supermarket. That's the same way airline label every fair that they sell. So most time when you get a barcode or when you see a barcode at the back of a product, you don't know what each of those what um, numeric um, symbols represent. But the person who created them has an idea of what each what symbol represent. Likewise, your fare basis. So every airline creates a fare basis to identify certain types of fares that they sell to their what their customers, right? So these codes are just made up of strings of what alpha and numeric what numbers. They're just made up of strings of alpha and numeric numbers. Then we have what we call an indirect route so an indirect route is a continuous air route other than a direct route so a direct route simply moving from origin to destination an indirect route is moving from an origin to a destination either via a single or multiple what point so if i go back to the itinerary i used earlier that's the itinerary for dublin frankfurt istanbul beijing and turkey so in this case, our point of origin is Dublin and our final destination is what? Tokyo. But if you look at between Dublin and Tokyo, we have three cities, which is Frankfurt, Istanbul, and what? Beijing. This type of journey is defined or described as an indirect what? route because we're traveling from one point of origin to a destination via three other intermediate what? cities. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have what we call interline or online transfers. So for during the course of your journey, you're going to have different type of transfers. So for for online transfers, online transfers talks about a transfers or connection between what two flights operated by the same what. Airline, that's online transfer. So I'll give you an example. So let's say I'm departing from um, from Lagos, right, to um, Lagos via um, Paris, from Paris to what to Amsterdam. So and from Lagos to Paris, I was conveyed by what by Air France, and from what from Paris to Amsterdam, I was also conveyed by Air France. So now those, what the transfer from Lagos to Paris and Paris to Amsterdam is described as an what online transfer because I'm still conveyed or transferred by the same what airline, which is what Air France. But when you have an interline transfer, this is a transfer that occurs between two different airlines that have what we call a code share agreement. Right, they have what we call a co-share agreement. That means they've come into terms together in order to be able to transfer or, or transport that particular portion of the journey. So I'll give you the same itinerary, Lagos to what Paris, Paris to what Amsterdam. So from Lagos to Paris, I was conveyed by Air France, but from Paris to Amsterdam, conveyed by what KLM. So that's an example of an online and interline what transfer. 
Are we good? Yes, we are. All right. So, okay. so at this um, juncture, right, I'll just take um, questions. Do we have any question? Do we have any question? Any question? So, um, Mr. John, you said um, we need to be really um, conversant with our geography, right? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, so what yes. about for someone like me who never, I really never liked geography, right, from secondary school, and um, I don't know. So, I'm seeing it as a challenge. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, okay. So, for, for, for you now, uh, you know, I'm so glad you asked that question. So what you can do now, we have different apps, right, on your Play Store, on your um, iOS Store that you can actually download that will help you or enable you learn your geography much better. So you can just go to your Play Store, type in um, um, geography map app, and you're going to have a lot of results. Right. So now those apps are more or less in the form of an interactive form. So it makes the learning quite easier for you. So that's one way you can actually help yourself what learn geography without having to be in the full confine of a classroom to do that. Is that okay? Hello? Hope I've been able to answer your question. Uh, I think she's not here anymore. I have a question, please. Okay, please do. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, unfortunately, I missed some things during the course of the session. Is that going to be like a recorded, uh, okay. what's it called, a recorded session of this class? That's going to be shared afterwards. Okay, so I have one of my colleague um answer that question. Hope you don't mind. Okay. All right. Okay, so one of my colleagues will respond to you shortly now. All right. So. All right, so with that, uh, I'm going to have to bring the class to a close now. So I'm going to hand over to my colleague. So she has some information she would like to pass across to you guys. Is that fine? Okay. All right, so I'm handing over to my colleague now, Shilo. The next face you're going to see is that of my colleague. Okay, um, hello everyone. Thank you for participating in this uh, master class. Um, Nelly, you have a question, right? Hello, good morning. Hello, Nelly, good morning. You have a question, morning, right? Yeah, I was asking Mr. John, yeah, if uh, a recorded ver version of the session was going to be shared, I don't know. Oh, because okay. I missed I missed a couple of things. Oh, okay, the yes. Of the session. Yes, it will be shared at the end of um this section, this um master class section, and um, if you don't get it today, you get it by Monday. Okay, ma'am. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, for everyone who participated in this uh, master class, want to say thank you. And um, we wish to see more of you. So for those who are interested to come for our classes in travel and tourism, that's Ayata Foundation in travel and tourism, ticketing, tour package, and all of that, we have classes ongoing. So in the May, um, month of May, we still have ticketing class, which is supposed to start on Monday. And we have the Foundation in Travel and Tourism class starting on the May, starting on the 30th of May and then top package on the 23 of this month. So those who are interested and want to join can as well reach out to us. And um, 
for those who are here and want to sign up immediately, you're going to get 5% discounts. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Let me hear you. Oh, okay, okay. So those can you who want to participate in any of the classes um, that are here, you have opportunity to get 5% discounts. So that's if you sign up today, from now till Monday, you will get the 5% discounts. Okay? Okay. Yeah, you can reach okay. out to us. You can reach out to us via WhatsApp. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and you get a response as fast as you, you reach out to us. You can as well meet us with physically at our address, number 16, Emina Crescent, off Tony Street, Ikeja. So I look forward to seeing all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate and we wish to have this again. Thank you so much. And those who want a um, gift from the instructors, kindly send me an SMS. Write the number on the screen. Send me an SMS. Write the number on the screen. And I'll revert immediately. Thank you so much. Uh, Esther and Padura, please kindly send me a message on the number or the screen, please. The 0908-766-0165. Thank you so much. So um, good afternoon, everyone. So I'd just like to say a big thank you for everyone who took their time out to make to class today. Um, I sincerely do appreciate, appreciate you all for taking your time to come to the masterclass. And hopefully, I hope to see each and every one of you at our facility at number 16, Emina Christian, for any of our courses. So thank you once again, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.